let's go back to that idea of dominance versus recessiveness. Now, this is something that I always like to talk about because people confuse the idea of dominance with something good, all right? Just because a gene is dominant, it doesn't mean it's good. What dominance means that if the, that gene is present, it always shows. While recessive means that the gene will only show if by itself or paired up with another like itself. So basically, that, that's what that means. Now, well, we talked about sex linkage before, and most of sex-linked disorders were recessive, we mean, which means you have to have the gene by itself in a hemizygous setup, either because of X chromosome deactivation or in males when they only have one X chromosome, or they have to be genes and which are paired. So in other words, a female that has both axes which are defective. So it's very rare to see a dominant uh, sex disorder. Most of sex disorders are usually recessive. Uh, dominant sex disorders typically cause death, and that's why we don't see them much. That's also true about autosomal dominant diseases. Typically, autosomal dominant diseases are, are very rare in the population because you would, they, since it's so easy to show because you're gonna, it's going to show up anytime it's present, it's going to lead to problems when it's around, and more often than not, these children don't have the, the, the other children, so that gene just gets deleted. But I want you to understand that dominant genes can be problematic. And also, that's another misconception people have, is the idea that wild types are always dominant. In other words, the original is always the dominant one. That's not true. In fact, sometimes the wild type is recessive to the new mutant, which is dominates over the recessive. How exactly a gene becomes dominant over the other is a chemical reaction and a genetic relationship that goes beyond the scope of what I have to teach even in AP Biology. But you need to understand these two misconceptions. Dominance does not mean a good thing. Dominance does not mean wild type, all right? The wild type is not necessarily dominant, not necessarily a good thing to, be a, to have a dominant gene. Sometimes the dominant genes are the mutants. Sometimes the dominant genes are the ones which cause problems. However, that would make the dominant gene unlikely in the population by natural selection because these people will be less likely to have children. And therefore, dominance doesn't, this is a third misconception, dominance does not mean the most common. Whenever you have a dominance disorder, it actually is going to be less common than the recessive gene because it's going to be selected against. And we're going to be talking about that. Now, notice how the inheritance of dominance genes is different from the inheritance of recessive genes. On a typical F1 cross where you have uh, two carriers connected, you're only going to get one out of four affected if you're talking about a recessive trait. But if you're talking about a dominant trait, three of them will be affected. Also, if you talk about a dominant trait and you have someone who's affected and someone who's not, you have a, you're going to have a 50-50 shot of, of showing the disease. And so the way that dominant genes are inherited and the way the recessive genes are inherited are different. And we're going to be looking at that in more detail through pedigrees uh, very soon.